We're here in the Dirtfish shop and we're going to show you uh, our new 2017 Subaru BRZ rally car that we built for a customer. We got it at the local dealership. It had about 50 miles on it uh, from Subaru. Uh, we brought it in, tore it down to the chassis, completely bare, had no parts on it. We made quite a few chassis modifications, um, which include obviously the full roll cage. We modified the front end of the car to lighten the chassis up. And we also seam welded the chassis. So if you take a look in here, uh, you can see that we strengthened the strut towers, made our own front end, went through and seam welded everywhere to give the chassis a lot more strength. Uh, inside we have our full US Rally legal cage. You can see the custom tunnel to accommodate the six speed sequential shifter. Hydraulic handbrake, uh, carbon fiber dash. Another thing that we did to this car is we added a lot of bit of protection. Rally's pretty, pretty harsh on the cars. So you can see we did mud flaps, um, underbody, and then the side here is actually carbon Kevlar. The BRZs have an issue where the front tires um, rash out this area. So this is a carbon Kevlar guard that basically protects the sill. So this thing's equipped with Hoosier tires. Uh, they provide pretty good grip. And then also we pretty much fit the biggest brake package you could get uh, underneath a 15 inch wheel. Performance friction calipers all the way around. Back here in the back of the car, we have a few neat things. Uh, the spare tire mount. Uh, it's kind of nice, simple, clean, it's easy to change. It also has a fuel cell setup, so those yellow caps over there come off. And then that's how we fuel up the tank. So instead of this car having a stock tank, it's got a fuel cell. The fuel cell is nice because we, we can relocate it wherever we want to. And then we can also um, supply our engine with better fueling. In this case, this car has two pumps. It's got a backup pump, so if one fails, um, the second's there ready to go. Okay, now that I've showed you around the chassis, I'm gonna introduce you to our lead tech, Chad Sherman. He's gonna get a little more in depth on uh, why we did certain things to the car. All right guys, we'll start in the engine bay. We changed the wiring harness from OEM to add certain sensors uh, that don't come stock. And we also wanted to be weatherproof and uh, heat resistant. So we use the Raycam. Uh, DR25 and we have a Tefsel wire running through to each and every sensor and we ran it through a Deutsch Autosport connector. It's a quick disconnect connector and it's a 66 pin. We didn't use all 66 but quick disconnect uh, for ease of pulling the engine, uh, leaving the harness on the engine when you are servicing it. Underneath here we are running the wires to the M1, uh, Motec M150 and the uh, PDM30 that uh, controls all of the electronics and uh, measures all the data from the sensors, controls injectors, all that stuff. We have our M150 then speaking to the Motec C125 display. We have uh, all of our sensors are communicating to this device and you can select through. We have coolant temperature, fuel pressure, throttle position, wheel speed. All right, so now I'm going to introduce you to Chase, our lead fabricator, and he's going to show you uh, more about the uh, fabrication process. Planning from the beginning, we knew we were going to cut um, a lot out of this car, so knowing that in mind, we had to get the, the cage built um, to hold the chassis together while we cut a lot of the sheet metal away. Um, so the cage structure, um, following the rules, um, nothing too crazy, but we try to keep it super tight up in here. For a lot of headroom, these cars are pretty small, so um, headroom is really, really important. Um, so after the cage, we cut out the center of the car um, to fit a larger gearbox. Um, the linkage on this Sadev um, sequential is on the top, so we had to make the tunnel a lot taller and a lot wider to make it easy to work on um, and to allow us to have a bunch of room. After that, we went to the back of the car. Um, we cut the whole trunk area out um, we wanted to put the exhaust on top of the subframe um, so that we had more room to do that. We had to cut all the sheet metal out of the floor. Um, so from there, we cut out a bunch more sheet metal. We wanted to put um, floor mount pedals in this car. So I made a bracket 
um, the pedal, the bracket actually welds to the floor, the pedals bolt to that, and then this here, false floor, covers up that, so your feet are on a nice level surface, um, and it's pretty grippy too. Now onto the front end fab work. Um, these cars, um, stock, the radiator is super hard to get out, um, so I cut all the sheet metal off the front of the car and made this tube structure. Um, the radiator here um, is actually now super, super easy to get out. Um, we have more room for turbo and stuff like that in the future. The idea on this car is that everything is easy to service. If you're at a rally and you need a part, um, but you don't have the custom part, the stock part will still fit back on the car. So you can uh, go out to your friend's BRZ in the parking lot at the rally, steal his front left control arm, and still bolt it back onto this car. On this car build uh, in particular, I really pushed the guys to find their limits and to see what they can do. Um, fabrication wise, wiring wise, really pushed them all to their limits and it, everything was executed so well, it came together and now we have this awesome chassis. Um, we're super stoked on the final outcome. It should be a really competitive package and we're super stoked uh, to see the customer enter their first rally and see how, how it goes.